So today we are in the lab and we are going to be uh, doing graphene transfer based on a uh, manuscript which we have just gotten accepted in chemistry materials. And the title of the manuscript is Do-It-Yourself Transfer of Large Area Graphene Using Just an Office Laminator and Water. So we have here our laminator, commercial laminator. We have water. We have graphene on copper foil, which we have oxidized in water overnight. And we have uh, PVA foils, which we are going to be using for our transfer. And our transfer today is going to be on a wafer of silicon dioxide. Before we get started, we need to clean the PVA foil. So what I do is I basically take one of our foils Go over to the fume hood and clean it with isopropanol. Just blow that in. Okay, it's completely dry now. We're now going to laminate the copper foil on top of this PVA foil. We place the copper foil facing down onto the PVA foil, like this. We, then we enclose it in an A4 sheet of paper because we want to prevent the, the foil from sticking to the silicon rubber of the laminator. Just stick it through our laminator. So where do you get the foil from? We actually get these foils in these large foil sheets, which we got from Alibaba. I think this one costs about $30 and we've been using it for now, almost two years and it's uh, it's I think a hundred meters long so very affordable and our office laminator we purchased from amazon.com and I think it was about two hundred dollars it was like one minute yes now we want to just make sure that the copper is sticking properly to the PVA foil. So what we now do is we give it a little more bake on top of a hot plate, which is at 110 degrees Celsius. And we want to just use this glass slide to just push down the foil while it's getting heated so it heats properly. We wait for about 30 seconds. And so now is a good time to get a coffee. If you will so desire. But uh, since we are in the lab and we're focused on doing our work, we're going to stay here and uh, wait for just 30 seconds. Is that enough? Um, 30 seconds is enough, but I usually just yeah, give it a bit it, more. Get, I just give it 30 seconds, five minutes, however you decide. I think it's a good. So now we just peel off the copper foil from this PVA sheet. Do we have to be careful with that or? No, it just usually it often comes off on its own, but uh, the speed is not really important here because the graphene is already on the PVA. Now you can see here that I'm peeling off the copper foil the and you, the gray stuff is that the is that that's the graphene? the graphene really as you can see the graphene is on the okay. PVA foil you can have the PVA foil with the graphene on top yeah you can see very clearly it's just like a sticker and the nice thing about this is now we can just cut it as we want
And in fact, you can store this on the PVA foil. Here we can see we have a previously transferred graphene on a, a 10 centimeter sized uh, PVA foil, which we use from time to time for transfers. So you could also make graphene foil and just send to people and make Exactly, so we actually store these for several months and then we use them as we want. We cut off how much graphene we want on these PVA foils. So now we're going to transfer this uh, onto our silicon dioxide wafer. So you're using the laminator once more? Yes. So this lamination is going to now transfer the graphene from the polymer foil onto whatever substrate that you want, using the same What do you mean, but whatever? What have you tried? What else? Other substrates? We've tried it on glass, on sapphire, on a number of other, poly on other polymers as well you can try, as long as uh, they do not melt at such temperatures. So it doesn't matter what kind of paper you're using? Paper paper works best. Um, tissue paper can also work, but typically you want to avoid using any sort of fibrous, fibrous based tissue, which would leave a lot of residues on the PVA. You can also use Teflon sheets if you are willing to spend the money for it. Is done. So now we just want to give it a final bake on the hot plate for roughly one minute. That's your second cup of coffee then. <laughs> That's my second cup of coffee, exactly. Or just in time for a YouTube video. So how large pieces have you transferred in this way? We have transferred uh, sheets of up to A4 sizes. So we actually have transferred entire foils. This is in fact one of the copper foils that we had transferred using the uh, PVA foil approach, which we see actually in the paper. See here, it's we've transferred A4 sheets of graphene using this method. All right, so so the top one is a photograph of of A4 polymer PVA foil, foil with graphene on top, graphene just on as top, the which one is being ripped off the the copper, copper foil exactly. And what what what's that we see below? This is the uh, terahertz uh, conductance map of the uh, graphene on the PVA foil from the image above, and we can see from this conductivity that you have uh, fairly uh, continuous sheet of graphene on top. Of course, you see these streaking lines, and these are because when you laminate very large areas of polymer foils, um, you can have thermal stresses building in the foils, and as a result, you can have sometimes foil not sticking very well to the copper foil. Hmm. But this is a technological issue, and roll to roll lamination is something that is uh, industrially uh, already optimized. So, this is something that would only happen in a uh, home built system. Cool. All right, so I think we are now in time to uh, see how our transfers went. So for this particular step, we want to peel off this white support that uh, comes on top of the PVA foils. And the way you do this is you keep your wafers on the hot plate and then you slowly peel off from one side the, uh, polymers, uh, the uh, white support. It just comes off usually. See here, it's coming off. That's a white foil, but the PVA is still there, right? Yeah, the PVA is still on the silicon dioxide, and the white foil helps to maintain uh, a rigid support when you're laminating this. Why, why is PVA a good choice? Because it's water-soluble, so instead of using acetone or other 
solvents which you need to work in fume hoods with, you can just store your solvents outside in a dish like this. The water is pretty cheap, so. <laughs> there we have our transfers. We will now put this inside a So you, you dip it in the in the jar there. How long time does it take for the PVA to dissolve? I like to keep it overnight because that makes sure the uh, PVA has come off entirely, completely. But uh, you, if you reduce the PVA foil thickness, you can... Uh, Careful it doesn't slide down. to the floor or something. Yep. All right, so... All right, now we leave it overnight. And we come back tomorrow to see how it went. So as you can see that this method is very simple and we did this process in roughly 10 minutes. And even though this is a very simple process, we can see from our results that uh, we get actually quite decent uh, transfers. In our paper, we show actually that when we have... Where should I... Top left or something. So, uh, so, so the the so for so in our paper we see that uh, when we uh, compare this transfer method to bubbling and etching transfers, when we use the same quality of graphene, that in fact that the uh, transfer properties as well as the Raman properties are better. So in this figure, you what you are seeing is uh, terahertz conductance maps, uh, extracted mobility, and uh, this is carrot entity, right? This so is carrot entity. The doping is low for the blue which is the PVA. the PVA transfer, and the mobility is pretty high, for much the, higher than the, twice as high as the two other methods. So These the gray the one is, methods. the gray is bubbling and the red is edging trend. Okay. Uh, oh, the red is bubbling so and the gray is edging have, We should keep an eye on the blue one. So the bottom stuff, that's... That's that's a Raman uh, figures Raman's of spectroscopy, yeah. yeah. So this is the 2D to G ratios. This is the D to G ratios, and this is the full width half maximum of the 2D peak. And yeah. in all cases, you see that PVA is better than bubbling and etching transfer. All right. Okay, so how would you how would you uh, further improve this technique? Well, I mean, what would you do? So as you can see, as you might have seen in our transfers, there are still some bubbles that form at, uh, on the wafers when you laminate them. And that is because you're operating these things in air. And this is a problem you generally have with lamination transfers. So a way that you could improve this method is by working in vacuum pressures. Another way that you can improve this method is by using uh, thinner uh, layers of PVA foils, which will then allow you to actually remove your PVA uh, in much faster time than overnight. Okay, thank you for your time and congratulations. Thank you.